As soon as you get the Freedom K64 board, the next thing to do is start looking for the software to actually program it. And what we have here is Windows 8.1, but uh, the Design Studio, Kinetis Design Studio that we're going to be looking at will work with not only Windows 8.1, but Windows 764 and, and probably some other versions as well. Also, you'll find when we look here, uh, we want to go and find out where that software is. And if you remember, if you take a look on the box, the name of the company that actually produces the Freedom K64 board is Freescale. So we're just going to type freescale.com. It's going to take us to the Freescale website. And they tend to move things around from time to time. But what we want to do down here is go to the Software Center. And under the Software Center, we have a couple of categories. Kinetis ARM, MCUs, and so forth. But we're going to go down by category here instead of by product because what we want is the IDE to debug, compile, and build tools. So let's just click on that. <clears throat> and what we're going to find is we have a number of different tools that come up here. Now the first one is the one that we want, but let's just take a look just for fun at some of these other tools over here. And you can see that some of these other tools can be as much as 67,500 fully um, populated. So it's like, wow, that's, that's crazy. So it's kind of nice that the design tool that we have is going to be zero dollars. I like that. So we're just going to click on Kinetis Design Studio and it's going to take us to the screen here and if we click on download it takes us right to where we want to be to do the actual download. Now there's three versions here. <coughs> the first one is for Debian Linux which also includes Ubuntu. Red Hat, Slackware and so forth is this version but we're going to focus on the Windows version. Now I did run the Ubuntu version but what I found is that the projects and so on that I uh, created in Ubuntu Linux were not compatible with the ones in Windows. So we're just going to focus on Windows. If you want to try these other ones, that's fine. But what we're going to do for most people, they're going to use Windows. So we're just going to click on um, KDS IDE. Now the thing that you have to do is here is to set up your email and a login so that you can download this stuff. I've got mine all ready to go. So I'm just going to log in. And once I log in, I should be able to then just go ahead and download this. Now, the first thing they're going to run into is the standard licensing thing. But before we take a look at saying I agree at the very bottom here, as we scroll all the way down, is um, they have some other third-party software that's going to be quite interesting for us. MQX, which is Message Queue Executive for Real-Time Operating System, is one of the things that we're going to be probably using as part of this course. And Segger is the thing that's going to allow us to talk to the Simpsons DAP. So once we've read through all of that, what we're going to do is go down here where it says, I accept. And when you say, I accept, it should start the download, and it'll ask you to um, save the file here. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to save, save file. And if I just back out here a little bit and go up to the top here, it's going to show the download progress. And if I just click on that, it shows this KDS-V2.0.0.exe. It's 511 megabytes. And it's going to maybe take a couple minutes to download. So when that's finished downloading, we'll take a look at the installation portion. Okay, to start the installation, all we have to do is click on this. And under user account control, we're going to say yes. And uh, under setup wizard, we're going to say next. We're going to create a desktop icon, so we're just going to say next. We're going to hit next again. And finally install. Now this is going to take several minutes to make sure that everything gets copied in properly. It's copying in new files and do the installation. When this section is complete, we'll take a look and see where we're at. Eventually it'll complete and if you noticed right near the end it installed Sager drivers, the ones we're going to be using as well as some PE drivers. So we're just going to say OK and we're going to let's get rid of our web browser here and we have here Kinetics Design Studio. So we're going to do is we're going now we have a couple things we can do with this uh, because we're going to use it a lot I'm just going to grab it and slide it down here and uh, pin to taskbar. So we have a way to now go down here and just actually launch Kinetis Design Studio. So I'm just going to click on here and it's going to launch it. Now 
the first time that it starts up it's going to be a little bit slow but it's going to ask for a default workspace and the default workspace we're just going to accept and we're going to continue on from there so the default workspace that it has for us is c colon backslash users your username and then workspace.kds so we're just going to say okay and it's going to take a few minutes possibly to start up and when it's finished it'll have up our screen that we're going to be using to do all of our programming to enter our code to do our debugging and everything will be launched shortly now what it opens up with is welcome to Kinetics Design Studio, which is fine. We're just going to make this go full screen. And uh, what we're going to do is go way over here to the top. And uh, what we're going to do is go to our workbench, because that's where we're going to work. Now, you can look at all that stuff that had under the welcome screen. That's fine. But this is the main screen that we're going to be working with here. Now, the first thing that we're going to do, and we'll always do this in this order, is we're going to go up here to File we're going to say new and we're going to go Kinetics Design Studio project. At that point, if we slide over here, it's going to give us a little requester that asks for the name. Now I'm going to call it project 1 and it's going to put it in our c colon users your username workspace.kds uh, forward slash project. And if we back out just a little bit here, <coughs> we'll see that it says next. So we're going to go to next, and of all these, this is the important thing to remember. All we have to tell it is just what board, and under Kinetics, Freedom K64, that's it. Now if we back out a bit again, then we can just hit next, and this is also important. Let's zoom in. We want to have processor expert and hardware configuration pin multiplexing. So these are the two that we're going to add to make sure everything's going to work right. Let's just zoom out just a little bit here and we're going to say finish. And that's what we're going to do to create our default project. Now it's going to be loading processor expert project here and processor expert is something we're going to use all the time to make our life easy because we have a very complicated microcontroller here and uh, it's not that easy to program it with starting with nothing. So it's finally going to come up here and we can see here's our microcontroller here. This is the MK64FN1M0VLL12. It's a 100 pin quad flat pack and it has all these different subsystems and so on in it. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at, you can see here we've got A to D's, we've got uh, DMAs, direct memory access, we've got I squared C's, a number of those. Uh, we have different ports which are part of the general purpose I.O. And we have UARTs and all sorts of stuff in here. So we have so many subsystems in here, it's very difficult for us to actually have control of all those. So what we're going to do is we're going to rely on the processor expert. Now notice up here at the right, let's go up to the top here. This is our hardware view. And what we want to do is go to our programming view. So we're just going to click on C++. Let's back out again. And at this point, this is the view that we have. Now let's zoom in a little bit on project. And we're going to open this up. And under sources, we're going to have events.c, events.h, and main.c. Now we're just going to work with main.c. But notice we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. Let's just open this up. We've got a lot of includes. Look at all those. And they have subcategories. We're not going to open those up now. You can if you want. Under documentation, we have a bunch of stuff under here. Let's close up documentation. Uh, generated code. We've got a whole bunch of stuff in here. It's very, very deep. And each one of these has its own subcategories. Project settings, linkers, startup code. But this is the one that we're typically going to look at here. Notice we've got processorexpert.pe and XML. We're just going to double click on this. And what we're going to find is main.c is going to open up over here. Now, if you are somewhat familiar with Eclipse, it's very easy to use once you get used to it. If we want to see this full screen, we just double click on main and it makes this whole thing full screen. If we double click on this again, it puts it back in to the sequence of things that are here. So it's very easy to flip back and forth between these various views. So I'm just going to bring this up full screen. Notice we'll also, as we zoom in here a little bit to the top, it has something called 
code folding that if we open this up we can put in all the documentation that we want but we can hit a negative sign here which will fold that up so we don't really have to look at it and it gives us a little bit more screen real estate to work with and then we can open these up again later. Now what it has here is need needed modules to compile this module. It's got a whole bunch of things in here and it says user includes so if we want to put our includes in we just put them here and uh, notice it says a number of things in here. It says write your local variable definitions here uh, do not remove this code, so make sure that code stays in there. Um, let's zoom back a little bit. So it has everything we want and places to put our own code. Now I'm just going to double click on this to put it back, and I'm going to do something that we need to do, and that's right up at the top here, is we're going to build. Now one of the things it's going to do is build. What building does is it creates a binary file and the binaries will show up up here and if you don't have binaries you cannot go in and use the debugger so that's basically the ins and outs of starting this up and right now we're just going to start with the bare bones default code and even with that we're able to actually look at and start working with a couple of push buttons around the microcontroller and the red green blue led that are all part of the general purpose IO or GPIO section we'll take a look at that next